Hi everybody, Steven here. If you ever wondered how to back up your NSX manager, or better yet, how to do a restore, that's what we're going to cover. So stick around. All right, thanks for sticking around. So what we're going to do in this one, uh, in this video, it shouldn't take too long to be honest with you. We're going to look at how we set up a backup server and do a backup. I think that's pretty easy to, for the most part. But more importantly, we're going to talk about how do we do a restore. Now, there's a couple things you got to be aware of, and I'll talk about those. Am I restoring to a single node NSX manager? Am I restoring to a cluster? Because there's a different procedure. Uh, I'm not sure why you would need to restore to a cluster, but I'll explain that. But you have to stick around. Anyways, before I continue, I always like to throw this out there. Hey, for those of you that subscribed to the channel and supported it, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Two thumbs up for you. If this is stuff that you're interested in, please support the channel. It's really simple. It's free. Click on that subscribe button, YouTube. Really simple. Also, liking and sharing is great. Uh, another way to support the channel is with super thanks. Totally up to you, though. So why don't we get started? All right, so let's take a look at this. I've already logged to my NSX manager. Uh, I'm going to go to system under lifecycle management. I'm going to go to backup and restore. And you'll see I do not have a secure FTP server set up. So there's no backup set up at all. I'm going to click on edit. And I'm going to type in the IP address of my secure FTP server. So mine's 172.20.10.30. And it's port 22 is SSH, my home directory slash home. This is where my backups are going. Yours is going to be different. What user am I going to use to for for that? Uh, I'm just mine is just called VMware. That's the user, and then I'll type in my password, or I could use a key if I was using that. But I'm just going to use a password for mine. Now your user, you're probably going to make something like NSX backup or whatever the case may be. This is just a lab environment. Uh, I'll talk about this fingerprint in a minute. The passphrase. I'll type in a passphrase here, and you want to make sure you don't forget this passphrase because without it you will not be able to do a restore, therefore your backups are useless. So you want to make sure you've got your passphrase securely uh, located. Now, uh, under SSH fingerprint here, notice I just click on the, the little information button here. It says the accepted fingerprint, fin, sorry, the accepted fingerprint for ECDSA key is SHA-256, 3D4, 512. It talks a little bit about it. It gives you an example right there saying SHA-256 colon and the key. So, uh, Yours, your method of getting this is going to be different depending on the type of FTP server you're using. Uh, I'm just using the Ubuntu. Um, so let me just um, change directory to where my SSH server is. The CD space root Etsy slash SSH. Uh, I'll do a SL. And you see uh, there's all my public keys and stuff like that. So I'm going to do a uh, SSH uh, key gen dash L dash E is SHA. 256 dash file is ssh underscore where is that uh, host underscore and where is it ecd ecd key all right if i hit enter on that oh it says permissions denied let me sudo and it comes back with this key so now and i don't care if you see this or not it's so my lab environment gets blown away almost on a daily basis. So I'm just going to copy that. Now that I copied it, I'm going to paste it into here. All right, and I'm going to click on save. Let's see what happens. There we go. So it's set up. Now over here under schedule, I can uh, edit a schedule if I want to. I can say start backup. Actually, well, why don't we um, do a backup? Let's start backup right now. So it's actually doing a backup. Notice again, like I said before, I could edit a schedule here. Maybe I want to do it weekly, daily, hourly, whatever the case may be. Totally up to you. Um, I guess the question will be, how often are you making changes in your environment, right? If you're constantly making changes, you want to do regular, regular backups, okay? Um, I'll let this run for a few minutes. If we just look at my environment, if I go into networking, if I look at my segments here, I've got a, I got my web, app database segment and I've got two uplinks. I got a tier zero gateway here. I've got a tier one gateway. Okay. If I look at my network topology, this is kind of what it looks like. Come on. Here's my web app and database segments. If I scroll up, you'll see I've got two web VMs on the web segment. I got an app VM on the app segment and I got a database 
VM on the database segment. Okay, uh, nothing too crazy here. Um, let's look at do I have any? Uh, I don't think I have any firewall rules set up or anything like that. So, anyways, let's just uh, go back into my backup and restore. And it's taken. It's basically finished at this point. Okay. So um, the last backup looked like it was successful. It was great. It showed me the date and time. And there it is. There I can select that. Notice this. The restore is grayed out. Let's hover over it. it. Says restore operation is allowed only on a newly deployed appliance. And if the IP and fully qualified domain name of the backup matches the IP and fully qualified domain name of the NSX appliance. So yeah, uh, basically what happens is this is used in the event that you completely lost your NSX management cluster. Now you should have three of them in your environment, okay? So if you lose one, if you've watched my videos on that, no problems, everything's still functioning, right? Uh, if you lose two, uh, you got that one left over, well, your management control plane is down, but you could convert that over to a single node cluster and get it back up and running fairly quickly within 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and I've done videos on that. You may want to watch those, okay? Basically, the videos are the NSX management cluster failing and stuff. Um, but nonetheless, if you had three of them and they all failed, let's say, simultaneously, let's say you, you put them on the same data store by accident and they all died all at the same time and they're gone, they ain't coming back. Then at this point, your only choice is to do a restore, right? Now, if, you're only, if you only have one appliance in your environment, if you're in a production environment, I highly recommend that's a really bad thing to do because it's very easy to corrupt a database on this thing. Um, I would very much caution you, if you only have one deployed, one NSX manager, not three in a cluster, but only one in production, I would really emphasize deploying two more, okay? Um, or else life could be really bad, right? Anyways, I only got one, it's my lab environment, who cares, right? So I'm gonna blow away my NSX manager. I'm gonna redeploy a new one. Now, if you haven't seen me redeploying NSX managers, I've got videos on all those. I'll leave those at the end, okay? So I'm gonna blow it away and I'm gonna see, and we'll, and we'll come back and then we'll see what happens from there, okay? By the way, let me show you a couple of things. Under my transport zones, you'll see I got a prod overlay and a prod VLAN transport zone. I still have the default ones, I'm not using those. Under my nodes, I've got two edge appliances here. I have an edge cluster at cluster 01. And my hosts, again, I got my site A uh, cluster, that's my vSphere cluster. And there's three hosts in there, those are my transport nodes, okay? Now, when I blow away my NSX manager, all the, my data plane will still function. My web VMs will still talk to app VMs, all that stuff functions, just that I can't manage my NSX environment anymore, okay? So data plane will still function. Um, so let's blow it away. Let's fire up a new NSX manager, okay? So I'll be right back. And by the way, hey, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It's free. It helps support the channel. See you in a second. Hey, everybody. Okay, so welcome back. All right, so I blew away my NSX manager. I deployed a new one. Again, you want to watch videos on setting up a manager, great. I only have the one deployed. That's it. If I go under system here, if I go into, uh, look, at, even at the top stage, you have not configured backups, right? If I go into system here, compute managers, you don't see anything there. If I go to networking, uh, network topology, there's nothing there. There's no gateways. Uh, even if I go back, uh, there's no gateway, sorry. No segments, you don't see anything, right? So there's nothing there. So the first step here is I need to configure my backups again. So let's go into system. Uh, let's go into uh, backup and restore. And again, you don't see any anything to restore here. So let's set up my FTP server again. Uh, so let's go back into 172.20.10.30. Uh, my directory is slash home slash VMware backup. Again, it was just like before, we set we set up exactly the same as before. And then my password. My passphrase, um, my passphrase, and uh, hopefully I didn't forget my passphrase. And I got to get my fingerprint here. And again, I left that up from the, when we did that just a little while ago. So I just copied that, I'll paste that. Oh, it came up in there. Oh, I typed in my username wrong. <laughs> That's the, the password. Again, I don't care if you see it or not, because it doesn't really matter. It's my lab environment gets blown away. Let's try this again. 
so it's failed there okay great notice now it, it filled up the backup history let me click on this now I get the option to restore so let's click on restore and see what happens okay folks so it comes up it says please read the following uh, step one power off power off all managed appliance that may be running from the earlier deployment um, yeah, so generally what you want to do is when you're doing a restore, you want to restore it to one manager. So let's say, okay, this is my environment. I had three managers. They all died on me. They're gone. They're not ever coming back. Deploy one, okay? Deploy a new one and then restore to that. Then once that's restored, then you create a second manager, join it to the cluster. You create the third manager, join it to the cluster, okay? So that's kind of what they're trying to say there. Restore to manager appliances before manager... Um, Restore to six manager your appliance from a backup note during the restore process. Your deployment will be read-only mode and user interface will be inaccessible. Okay, yeah. Uh, go to the backup and restore page. After the restore, okay, so here we go. Let's go to continue. And let's, let's let it run and see uh, what happens. Cross fingers. All right, folks. So I'm just going to let this run. I may speed this up a little bit and we'll take it from there. All right, everybody, as you can see here, um, it looks like when it was doing the restore, it restored the database and had to restart that. So obviously your browser gets disconnected, right? So you probably saw some stuff there about the browser couldn't fetch the information. But it says, status of your restore operation is successful. Please go to the restore page for more information. Okay, great. So I can say, don't show this page again. I'll say, all right. And uh, let's see what's going on here. Let's go to the system, backup and restore. And it was successful. All right, let's... Uh, Check out a couple things. Let's go to uh, networking. Let's go to, oops, sorry. Let's go to networking view. Let's get back that back up here. Tier zero gateway, there's my tier zero gateway. There's my tier one. There's my segments. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's look at my system here. Let's look at fabric, hosts. Again, it has all the hosts. Notice actually, oh, that's the management one here. Let's go to cluster here. There we go. So uh, there's our taps, my transport zones, right? Which is our transport nodes, I should say. Hey, let's look at transport zones as well. There's my, my transport zones. They're all good. Uh, what else? Compute manager should see my vCenter there. So everything looks like it's good, right? It's restored. Um, so that's pretty much about it. Now, a couple of things that you want to watch out for, right? As I mentioned before, actually, no, I didn't mention this. Whatever version of NSX that you back up, when you do a restore, it has to be the same version, exact same version, okay? 4.1. whatever it is, 4.2. whatever it is, right? So it has to be the exact same version. So I know you may be doing updates and stuff. When you do an update, you wanna make sure you maintain a copy of, of, of the ISO or, uh, or of the appliance, make a copy of the appliance, right? So always have that handy. So in case something that, like this happens, you're not scrambling running to the website trying to download the appliance and then install you have it ready uh, probably a good idea to put that copy maybe in your backup server okay um, data plane still functionality it's always data plane was still working so I don't really need to show you that uh, the web server can still talk to database and app remember the managers only um, the control and data uh, management plane and control plane data plane still functions so now that I'm done with this I could actually go in and um, uh, let's go to appliances here. I can go and deploy my second appliance and my third appliance and I have my cluster back up and running. That's what you would do in production, okay? Um, you, but like I said before, you just if you're going to deploy it, don't set up the cluster first. Set up one node, do the restore, then deploy the second, the third. I would just go click on add here and then my cluster's back up running. So make sure you do backups. Uh, that's it. One th the last thing I do want to point out, backup restore and show you this. Now, I could schedule it. I can say right now, recurring backup is disabled. I can specify how many, I want to do it every hour, right? Intervals are weekly, maybe every Sunday, Wednesday, Friday at whatever time, right? You can also detect in configuration as well if you want to back up based on configuration changes. So you have to ask yourself, um, how often am I making changes and stuff like that? Um, if I actually, um, 
this would actually be a, a very interesting experiment but if you if you actually have um let's say you you um you created your uh your backup right and then you made some changes and then things went down and then you had to restore from the backup the backup won't have those changes so you may run into problems there so it's important to make sure you're doing your backups when you're making making changes and stuff like that so how often are you doing that will dictate how often you do your backups uh, i'm going to cancel this uh, but that's about it uh, thanks for uh watching um hit that thumbs up i found this entertaining if you like it hey and support the channel by subscribing i do have super thanks enabled totally up to you thanks again Comments and questions, leave it down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye now.